SpaceX owns Starship, but they don't know when it launches. Yeah, this sounds paradoxical, but is the real truth. Ship 25 and Booster 9 are now almost ready on the Starbase launch pad for their flight mission. However, they probably won't leave the ground in the near future. The person who decides its fate now will not be Musk or anyone at SpaceX. The red button is in the hands of the FAA. I think, I think there's a decent chance, depending on when our licenses are granted, that we... This statement completely reflects Musk's frustration and helplessness in the face of the regulatory process. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. This is truly a long battle for SpaceX Starship. Just one month ago, excitement reached its peak as SpaceX announced that it was preparing for the highly anticipated launch of the Starship. The company had meticulously prepared, fully stacking the rocket and establishing a launch window spanning from September 8 to the 13th. Musk declared on X that Starship is ready to launch, awaiting FAA license approval on his mouthpiece. SpaceX then showed a completed list of 57 out of 63 corrective actions and asked for permission to fly. The FAA's answer was still no. The FAA's failure to grant the necessary launch license left enthusiasts disappointed, thwarting their hopes of witnessing this mammoth rocket embark on its second journey. This time, the reason for the delay was due to the Fish and Wildlife Service wanting to review SpaceX's improvements after that launch. They expect the work to last several months, so SpaceX's next flight will be postponed to 2024. Many reasons, well, this situation is not unique. SpaceX says ambitious timelines have often been hindered by FAA regulations and processes. The sluggishness of the FAA is most evident in the first orbital launch attempt of Starship. In preparation for the first orbital launch, SpaceX proposed an environmental assessment to the FAA in late 2021, but it wasn't until February 2022 that they initiated the PEA program for Starship. According to their reporting timeline, it was supposed to be published in May 2022, but the FAA postponed it to June 2022. And nearly 10 months later in April 2023, Starship could finally carry out its launch. The reason given to cover up the FAA's delay is the time-consuming consultations with local authorities or technical issues beyond their control. To be frank, this is due to their cumbersome and unprofessional evaluation process. The PEA assessment could have been completed earlier if the FAA had taken PE as seriously from the beginning. In fact, SpaceX has grown accustomed to the FAA's recurring scenarios since the initial prototype launches of Starship. This has led Elon Musk to express considerable frustration, stating that he was fed up with the FAA. In December 2020, SpaceX was attempting to launch and land their first-ever Starship prototype. The FAA had worked with SpaceX and granted them a launch license, but they could only launch under certain weather conditions. Just minutes before SN8 took off, the FAA told SpaceX to cancel the launch. SpaceX employees at Mission Control ignored this message since they thought the weather was fine and that the FAA inspector didn't have the latest weather data. After an impressive launch, SN8 had a hard landing and ended in a massive explosion. Although no one was injured, the FAA was angry that SpaceX had ignored their launch requirements. And they did stipulate that an FAA inspector must be present for every flight of Starship from Boca Chica. The rigorous oversight from regulatory agencies behind the scenes played a role in delaying SpaceX's subsequent testing efforts with Starship 9. The gleaming 16-story steel rocket was fully fueled and ready for liftoff. However, at that moment, FAA officials were still in the process of reviewing the license for the test as SpaceX had made some changes to its permit application. During that time, Musk expressed extreme frustration with the process, tweeting unlike its aircraft division, which is fine, the FAA space division has a fundamentally broken regulatory structure. The license violation and subsequent license review process have escalated tensions between SpaceX and the world's biggest transportation agency. For years, 
Musk and others in the space industry have bemoaned the age-old U.S. regulatory framework for launch licensing as innovation and competition in space skyrockets. The delay of this agency also manifested in the launch of Starship SN11, with a very silly reason, as the FAA inspector couldn't make it to the starbase in time. All right, to be fair, the FAA is doing nothing wrong here. However, as Elon Musk said, the FAA's regulations for space launches and rocket testing don't fit today's reality. The complex process is meant to enforce safety rules for the days when rockets were launched only a few times a year and not an aggressive program like SpaceX's Starship. Being a test, it was expected that things would go wrong, but the FAA doesn't see it that way. That may be why Musk says the current rules were meant for a handful of expendable launches, as an expendable rocket wouldn't ever have a landing problem in testing because they don't land at all. Instead of being able to accept that the fireball was a successful test that gave SpaceX data to improve the design and operating procedures, current rules require them to treat it like an accident that must be investigated. To understand more about this, I want to make a wider point about the FAA that affects not only space programs, but also the most popular form of electric aviation, small unmanned aerial systems, SWAs or drones. The problem here is that the FAA is great at managing long-standing things like commercial airliners and general aviation, where rapid change isn't happening. When it comes to a new aircraft or space technology, the agency struggles to do anything at all at first and then is very slow at responding to the changes. This not only hampers the good that new technologies can do, but leads people to believe that the agency isn't acting in the nation's best interest. It's clear that lawmakers and the bureaucracy itself need reform. Technology moves fast, and we need the agency to actually do the job that voters and their representatives gave them. It is supposed to be making sure that Air operations are safe and shouldn't be stuck in regulatory and legal molasses. Even on issues that Congress gave full authority to the agency for, there's a culture of careful consideration that isn't tempered with common sense. It's common for federal regulators of all kinds to be behind the times and a big pain to deal with, so this isn't a problem that the FAA exclusively deals with. Much of it isn't the fault of any individual administrator, regulator, lawyer, or official. They're all stuck in a bad system that keeps the agency from doing its job. If it was all trivial, this wouldn't be a big deal, but new technologies save lives. When we can't save lives with new technologies because fogey at the federal government is mired down by a plethora of conflicting and outdated rules, real people are hurt needlessly. Perhaps Congress should pass a law creating a common sense department in each regulatory agency that regulated businesses and hobbyists can contact to get bad or outdated rules a quick review. This department could be empowered to issue temporary rule changes for each situation they find lacks common sense, and those temporary rules apply until the normal regulatory process can incorporate the changes. If something like that could happen, drone operators and space companies could get things done and the public would be safer as a result. And that just wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.